When you have a black hole, actually even more general systems, but talk about a black hole, there's an alternate description of a black hole in terms of what's known as the holographic description. For a long time, the Big Bang has been the major and widely accepted explanation for our existence. Yet humans have not stopped asking, where did we come from? In a bid to answer this question, scientists seem to have stumbled upon a mind-blowing discovery, one that might prove the Big Bang theory is wrong. This discovery can be traced to the perimeters of a black hole, an astronomical field characterized by both facts and mysteries. Its heart towards the constellation Sagittarius is Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole suspected to reside there. Is it possible that the black hole and not the Big Bang is the source of our universe? Join us in today's video as we explore the topic. The Big Bang was wrong. We live inside a black hole. Black holes have captivated the imaginations of scientists and the public for decades. The 20th century came with many surprises, especially in the field of astronomy, where some of our preconceived beliefs about the universe were reshaped. About a century before that, we assumed that the Milky Way galaxy housed everything we could see in the sky. Furthermore, we believed that the universe was static, unchanging, and likely eternal. However, all these changed with the emergence of new research that served as an eye-opener on the possibilities that exist in our world. Before now, it was believed that our universe was bound only by Newton's law of gravitation. Little did we know that a superior theory existed which is Einstein's general relativity theory. From Einstein's theory, we see the relationship between matter and energy and explore the fabric of space-time. Einstein's theory reshaped the narrative that the universe was static. According to the theory's equations, it is impossible that our universe is static. Instead, it is ever-changing. Furthermore, his theory predicted the existence of black holes. And guess what? Scientists have detected and even taken direct images of these black holes. We are delighted to be able to report to you today that we have seen what we thought was unseeable. So Einstein's theory was correct. Black holes do exist. The confirmation of the existence of black holes forced scientists to wonder about the possibility that a black hole might have birthed our universe. To some scientists, this hypothesis sounds far-reaching. But when we consider the features of a black hole, there is a high chance that it is true. The peculiar thing about black holes is that they have an event horizon, which is the boundary of the black hole beyond which no object can escape. Once an object crosses the event horizon, it cannot leave. It's gone for life. In essence, the event horizon can be said to represent two worlds. Objects that are outside the event horizon tend to experience the black hole's gravitational effects, while any object that moves over to the other side of the event horizon is bound to be swallowed into the hole's central singularity. The discovery of the first neutron star in the 1960s changed our perspective of black holes, as the star was evidence that black holes existed. So far, the evidence of black holes varies in different types of observations, such as radiation analysis of X-ray binaries, gravitational lensing of the light from distant galaxies, and the motion of visible objects around invisible partners. The uniqueness of black holes is that light cannot escape from their boundary for us to see. However, all hope is not lost, as there is a way out. Black holes have a strong gravitational effect on the celestial objects surrounding them, which makes it possible to detect their existence. Its heart towards the constellation Sagittarius is Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole suspected to reside there. So far, the closest and most striking evidence of a black hole is at the center of our universe. Surprising, isn't it? Working with the WM Keck telescopes, the UCLA Galactic Group obtained and evaluated data that determined the orbits of several stars in our galaxy. From the data obtained, the physics of stellar creation and evolution is well established. Furthermore, we learn that the ultimate energy source that makes stars shine is the self-gravitational energy that triggers fusion. Generally, the more massive a star, the brighter it shines, 
and the shorter it lives. At this point, the only possible interpretation is that a mass, which is four million times the mass of the sun, confined to a small region and cannot be seen, is nothing other than a black hole. Who would have thought that after several extragalactic observations, scientists would be forced to admit that black holes are at the center of galaxies? The black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy is known as Sagittarius A star. Although it is four million times the mass of the sun, its event horizon is only 15 million miles across. This event horizon can fit inside Mercury's orbit with enough space to spare. Also, its radius has been found to increase in direct proportion to the black hole's mass. Contrary to what has been pushed by sci-fi movies, black holes do not vacuum matter up. This means that if an Earth-mass black hole replaced our beloved planet, the moon's orbit wouldn't change. Another surprising information that has emerged from the study of black holes is that small size matters because the gravitational field remarkably changes as we approach the event horizon. This explains why scientists say black holes are a good place to test relativity. One look at the gravity wells that exist in black holes and you will be blown away. Researchers are still amazed by the powerful gravitational forces that are operational around black holes. The gravity wells are so steep that a person standing three feet from an Earth-mass black hole would experience a force more than 40 trillion times the gravity at the Earth's surface. This is one experience no human should look forward to. Within the vicinity of the black hole, the bending of light is easy to spot, and effects like time dilation and deviations from Newtonian mechanics are large enough to be observed readily. If for any reason relativity stops working, near a black hole is where we will likely see it occur. Scientist Tim Johansson agrees with this hypothesis. Johansson, a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Waterloo in Ontario, specializes in studying gravity in extreme environments. According to Johansson, black holes allow us to find relativity's breaking point. So far, the general theory of relativity has passed every test scientists have come up with. It has given more credence than Newton's law of gravity for helping push the boundaries of our understanding of space, time, and gravity. Physicists are spending hours working with radio telescopes and gravitational waves to investigate black holes. Also, they have been committed to tracking the motion of stars and other matter around black holes in a bid to learn whether they follow the rules laid down by Einstein. One of the most recent discoveries in this area occurred on February 11, 2016. Two research teams announced to the scientific community that they had carried out the first observation of gravitational waves, which Einstein's theory had predicted a century ago. The discovery was made by the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO, where a team of scientists had caught ripples in space-time itself. We can almost picture the look of intrigue on the researchers' faces when they found out that two black holes had collided and merged more than a billion light-years away. Although this was a big win for general relativity, scientists say that we have barely scratched the surface regarding our understanding of black holes. If this is the case, the question on everyone's mind is, what else do we not know about black holes? It is in the pursuit of this question that Johansson and other like-minded astronomers are making use of the Event Horizon Telescope, EHT to find out whether relativity breaks down in the shadow of a black hole. The Event Horizon Telescope is one of technology's gifts to the field of astronomy. It is a collection of radio telescopes that are positioned in different locations across the world. Johansson and his colleagues have chosen to work with the EHT because it employs a technique called Very Long Baseline Interferometry, where all the telescopes are in alignment. The telescopes work together to achieve a resolution comparable to a single instrument with a diameter nearly as wide as our planet. The array produces enough resolution for the radio astronomers to observe Sagittarius A star. From these observations, we have also learned of the existence of a much larger supermassive black hole 
said to lurk around the center of the giant elliptical galaxy, M87, in the Virgo Cluster. Thanks to the EHT, we know that accretion disks of dust and gas surround both massive black holes. Furthermore, we now understand that such disks tend to form around black holes, because their strong tidal forces tend to rip apart any object that gets too close. Another chilling fact is that the friction within the disk heats the material to millions of degrees before it falls inside the hole, and the gas glows brightly in wavelengths ranging from X-rays to radio. The investigation of black holes took a peculiar turn after it was revealed that they act like lenses. This means we should expect to see a perfect ring of light as the photons from behind the black holes are bent around it. Often, researchers have described the dark void at the center of the ring as a shadow. However, in the actual sense, it is a silhouette of a black hole against the bright background light. If, for any reason, the ring isn't a perfect circle and we notice some oscillations, then it means that a quantum effect may be happening. Also, this is the first time anyone has seen something like it around a black hole. The world will not forget Karl Schwarzschild, the German physicist and astronomer, in a hurry. He is the reason we have the Schwarzschild radius, also known as gravitational radius. The Schwarzschild radius is a defining physical parameter in our understanding of black holes. It is said that any object whose radius is smaller than the Schwarzschild radius is a black hole. The Schwarzschild radius came into existence in 1916, and since then, it has proved useful in investigating black holes. For instance, we know that the surface at the Schwarzschild radius behaves like an event horizon in a non-rotating body. Schwarzschild radius is the parameter by which we classify black holes. Another way of classifying black holes is their density. In this case, density refers to the mass of a black hole divided by the volume of its Schwarzschild sphere. Since Schwarzschild's radius is linearly related to mass, while the enclosed volume corresponds to the third power of the radius, it has been inferred that small black holes are much denser than larger ones. The Schwarzschild radius divides black holes into three main groups, supermassive black holes, stellar black holes, and micro black holes. The supermassive black holes are the largest type of black holes in existence. They are usually in the order of hundreds of thousands to billions of solar masses. We have even detected supermassive black holes of up to 21 billion solar masses, such as NGC 4889. Supermassive black holes are characterized by low average densities. In contrast, Stellar black holes have much greater average densities. Micro black holes are known for having a considerably small Schwarzschild radius. When we gaze into space, our solar system appears surrounded by billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Have we considered the possibility that we could be inside a black hole? Sounds eerie, doesn't it? However, scientists say that we shouldn't rule out this possibility. They have reason to believe that we are right in the middle of a black hole. There is a high chance that a black hole swallowed the Earth billions of years ago, but skeptics argue that this cannot be the case, and we might have to agree with them because the gravitational pull of the black hole on the Earth would be so devastating. This opinion is shared by Gaurav Khanna, a black hole physicist at the University of Rhode Island. Khanna and other scientists tell us that if the Earth were to approach a black hole, time would slow. Furthermore, depending on the size of the black hole, matter would be stretched out into spaghetti-like shapes in a phenomenon often called spaghettification. In such a scenario, our planet would be headed for a dense and tiny singularity. Once it gets to this singularity, the Earth would be incinerated by the pressure and temperature of a massive gravitational force so there's no way our planet has been swallowed up by a black hole at any time. However, we have been made to see another angle to our relation with black holes. Although the Earth has never been swallowed by a black hole, there is another possibility about how we might have ended up in the interior of a black hole. What if the Earth was formed inside the black hole? Think about it. 
it makes perfect sense. The black hole is just like the Big Bang in reverse. Even the mathematical explanations for both look similar, according to what Kana and other physicists tell us. The black hole collapses into a tiny, highly dense point, while the Big Bang explodes from the same point. A popular theory that is making waves now in the scientific community is that the Big Bang was the first singularity of the black hole in a larger parent universe. According to Kana, the dense center compressed and compressed until it blew up and a baby universe was formed inside the black hole. This theory is known as Schwarzschild cosmology, and it is based on the premise that our universe currently expands within a black hole that is part of a parent universe. An implication of this theory is that universes can exist within universes. We are talking about a multiverse here. If, by some miracle, light successfully travels through this reverse world, we will be unlocking the doors to new realms, ones that were previously unexplored. Furthermore, researchers believe that if we were nested inside a black hole, it means that it is very big. Scott Field, a professor of mathematics at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth, is one of those concerned about the space chasm's size. He postulates that the Earth is not just embedded inside a planet-sized black hole, or even one the size of the solar system. If this were the case, we would have known because there would have been observable signs of the black hole spinning. Also, we would have noticed distortions due to extreme gravity. There would be cases of slowing time and stretching matter as we lived within the black hole. It would be impossible not to notice the effects of these tidal forces as we moved from one location to another. So the conclusion is that if we are really in a black hole, it is much larger than our planet. Scientists say that any black hole that would house our planet must be massive and of universe size. This criterion is important because it would prevent us from traveling far enough or fast enough and reach a point where we begin to detect gravitational distortions. One interesting theory about black holes is that they might be a passageway between one universe and the other. Dr. Nikodem Poplowski of the University of New Haven is one of those who believe in this theory. According to Poplowski, a black hole may be a one-way door between two universes. This means that if one falls inside a black hole, one's shredded particles might be reformed at the other end. This other end is a different universe. If this is true, then it means that all hope is not lost if one ever falls into a black hole. Thus, the black hole links our universe and this unknown and unexplored universe. The field of astronomy is yet to recover from the spectacular discovery of the mid-1960s. During this period, scientists got the surprise of their lives when a uniform omnidirectional bath of low-energy radiation appeared from all locations of the sky. It was such an enchanting sight. To add more intrigue, the radiation had the same temperature in all directions, which was determined to be 2.725 Kelvin. It was just a few degrees above zero. A look at the radiation revealed that it had a perfect black body spectrum. This meant that it likely had a hot, thermal origin. Also, it appeared identical to within one part in 30,000, no matter where one looked in the sky. The radiation was originally called the primeval fireball and is now known as the cosmic microwave background. It provides us with critical evidence that our universe is expanding and cooling because it was hotter and denser in the past. Thanks to this discovery, we now know that the farther back we extrapolate, the smaller, more uniform, and more compact things become. We were given a picture of the Big Bang, where it seems to approach a singularity, the same condition found at the central interiors of black holes. Not long after knowledge of the cosmic microwave background became public, scientists were faced with another discovery called cosmic inflation. This discovery rocked the foundations of cosmology and refined our understanding of the universe. In cosmic inflation, we are made to know that the universe didn't arise from a singularity. Instead, it came into existence due to a rapid, relentless state of constant exponential expansion 
that came just before the Big Bang. Some scientists hypothesized that there was a kind of field that provided energy inherent to space itself. This energy caused the universe to inflate, and only when the inflation stopped did the Big Bang begin to occur. Cosmic inflation has been closely followed by the theory of dark energy. From what astronomers have said so far, dark energy causes the universe to expand and become less dense. Afterward, the distant galaxies start to recede from our universe at an alarming rate. Furthermore, the universe behaves as if there is some sort of energy inherent to space itself, refusing to dilute even as the expansion of space continues. Dark energy, which is also known as cosmological overcoupling, has been described as an unknown form of energy that affects the universe on the largest scales. So far, the exact nature of dark energy remains a mystery, but many explanations have been pushed forward over the years. However, one conclusion that scientists have been forced to draw is the effect of dark energy on our galaxies. It is believed that due to the accelerating expansion, most galaxies would eventually cross an event horizon where any light that they emit past that point would be unable to reach us at any time in the future. Recently, scientists have had reason to believe that the dark energy causing the rapid acceleration of the universe might be linked with black holes. They say that dark energy might be coming from the supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies. Before now, we believed there was no connection between black holes and dark energy due to their differences. However, scientists seem to have found a middle ground where both phenomena share a connection. We owe this new finding to quantum mechanics, which suggests that the vacuum of empty space should contain a type of energy called vacuum energy. This energy is believed to spread throughout the universe and exert a force opposing gravity, which makes it a prime candidate for the identity of dark energy. This hypothesis was first brought to light in 1966 by Soviet physicist Erast Gleiner. Gleiner showed us that Einstein's equations could also create objects that looked and behaved like black holes to external observers. However, they are actually giant balls of vacuum energy. If these objects existed, then it means that instead of being uniformly spread across space, dark energy is confined to specific locations. In this case, the locations happen to be the interiors of black holes. Although it is bound within the black holes, dark energy would continue to exert its space, stretching effect on the universe. Overall, it's clear that it would be wrong to rule out the possibility that our universe was created by a black hole. Scientists are still investigating this possibility, and who knows what new evidence might spring up soon. Until they emerge with a new finding in this area, it's only fair that we allow our imaginations to run wild regarding the possibilities that exist with black holes. Thanks for watching this Voyager episode. For more exciting space discoveries, click the next video on the screen.